My first guest tonight is the former mayor of South Bend, Indiana, who just made history at the Iowa caucus. Please welcome Mayor Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, thank you so much for coming back. Thank you. Good to see you again. Thanks for having me. Thank you. How you been? <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> it has been, uh, it's been an extraordinary, uh, Fall and winter so far. Yeah. Uh, we've talked three times, the third time that we've spoken. And one of the things I always like about talking to you is that you actually answer questions that are posed to you. I don't actually hear stump speech when I ask you questions. People ask me, like, oh, who have you been pressed with? And I go, well, there's this guy named Pete Buttigieg, he's the mayor of South Bend. What? That guy's running? I said, yes. <laughs> This is when you first came on. People didn't know who you were. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about it because it was ex almost exactly a year ago. And, yeah. Uh, it was when my book was coming out. And I, I had this, you were very kind to me, but I had this sense that maybe you were a little bit skeptical of my chances of, you know, coming anywhere near the American presidency. <laughs> a little bit. I mean, South Bend's a lovely place. It is, yeah. You won last time with like 8,000 votes or something. It's not the same scale that we imagine that a national candidate succeeding on. Of course. Um, and one of the things I said to you at the time, was, you know, um, one hopeful sign I see in America is that the third or fourth thing I learned about you was that you were a gay man. Mm -hmm. I learned everything else first, and now I think it bears uh, noting that you are the first LGBTQ person to win delegates in any presidential contest. <laughs> What's that mean? What's that say? To you, and I'll let them <laughs> a good moment. What what does that what does that mean to you personally, and what do you think that means about America? Well, uh, what it means to me personally is that you know the, the very same thing that I thought might mean I would never get to serve in uniform or in office um, turns out to be talk about God having a sense of humor. It, it turns out to be part of how I've had a chance to make a difference. Uh, I didn't set out to be the gay candidate or the gay president, but also uh, was open about who I am. And here we are. And, and my hope more broadly is that, uh, you know, I, I know there's a lot of people, there's a lot of young people out there wondering if they fit, uh, feeling like maybe they don't belong in their communities, maybe even questioning if they belong in their own families. And hopefully this is one significant bit of proof that, that they belong after all and they belong in this country. We know you best. Everybody on your, on your posters and everything, it says Mayor Pete. Yeah. If, if you end up uh, becoming uh, the 46th president of the United States, will it be President Mayor Pete? I don't exactly roll off the... T technically, I guess it'd have to be President former Mayor Pete, but... <laughs> yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe just now, Pete. Now, uh, do we know uh, this is actually being taped on Wednesday for Thursday night? I just want to ask my producer, do we, what is the latest do we know about... Uh, do you know what the latest results are from uh, the great, if confused, state of Iowa? <laughs> so the last I checked, uh, by the measure of state delegate equivalents, uh, we are on track to be the first place winner in the Iowa caucus. Do you know how much is reporting at this I point? I think there's, uh, I, I believe it's over 80%. I think there's another 15% or so of the precincts to go. So we're still waiting on some of these uh, uh, verified mm -hmm. results as we sit here speaking. Okay, but you actually did not wait on the night of the caucus. You went ahead and said, yeah, I'm pretty sure we won. <laughs> that is what historians call ballsy. Um, yeah, well, we do you, felt... Do you, why even campaign in New Hampshire? Why don't you just declare victory there now? <laughs> Can you name me as the winner of the Emmy so I don't have to give a congratulations to John Oliver next September? <laughs> right now?
I could, but I don't know if it goes well for you as Iowa went for us. I mean, look, we, you know, we, we were obviously waiting on the verified uh, figures, but the thing about uh, the caucuses, it's not like a secret ballot vote. Uh, people do it out in the open, and high school gyms and reporters are there, and so we had observers and, and, and volunteers there. And we'd yeah, and they write to the totals up on the yeah, board. exactly. So we'd seen enough to know that uh, even as, as the final math, which even now we're waiting for, was being done, that uh, th there was no way to see it as anything but an extraordinary victory for this campaign. Have, have, you, have you guys communicated with any of the other campaigns about your mutual frustration about what happened? Because you've spent a year yeah. in Iowa. And mostly, yeah. mostly, I mean, but I mean, on and off a year in Iowa. Yeah, I mean, in the last three weeks, we did about 55 events. So okay. you're, you're working toward this for a year. There's bus tours, there's campaigning, there's debates. Were you then, afraid that it would end up being meaningless, all that effort? No, I mean, we... Look, nothing can change the, the fact of, of what, that, uh, what that caucus meant and, and what it meant that, that so many Iowans uh, stood in front of their, their neighbors and, and friends and, mm -hmm. and, and made this statement. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it's generally nice to get the results. Well, it'd be like at the Emmys, you know, if, if you had to wait a couple days after the ceremony to find out who <laughs> actually got it. I'm sure very frustrating yeah. for everybody. So It's uh, pretty frustrating yeah. already. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, okay, so... Let's talk about um, Iowa. There's some criticism that it's not representative of the United States. Is a win. If you're right and you get the majority of the delegates and are technically the winner of Iowa, what does that mean nationally? Winning in some place that is so um, demographically non-demonstrative of the rest of the country. Yeah, there's no question that it will be as important uh, in the future to compete in states that have greater racial diversity, for example, will be in Nevada soon, will be in South Carolina soon. Uh, but here's one of the reasons why that Iowa success is so meaningful to us. It's that we were able to succeed in rural areas, in suburban areas, and in urban areas, in counties that, that voted Democratic the whole time, and uh, many of those counties that famously swung in a big way from voting for President Obama to voting for Trump. And if we want to beat Donald Trump, and I, I think we all, at least <laughs> most of us, want to make sure that happens. You know, all of us candidates have been going around the country saying, you know, pick me. I'm the one to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this president. I'm the one who can put together uh, a, uh, a big win. And the process of proving that began in Iowa, and this is a great way to demonstrate that we have that kind of appeal. Well, let's talk about going toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with President Trump. Uh, now that President Trump has been acquitted by the Senate, does it change at all how you run against a president who has been acquitted of impeachment? Found guilty in the eyes of even many Republicans, a majority of Americans in polls wanted him removed, yeah. and yet he stays in office. You know, my biggest concern about the effect of this is a sense of exhaustion with everything because we, we, we see the process in the Senate. It wasn't a real trial. I mean, they didn't have witnesses. Anybody knows a trial generally ought to have witnesses. Uh, the, the jurors, so to speak, many of the GOP senators made clear this was a foregone conclusion. And the, the worst thing that could happen is if we give in to a sense of, of, of hopelessness or exhaustion and walk away from the whole process. But the, the best thing about the fact that this is 2020, we're living in an election year, is that... Uh, yeah, the, the, the Senate was the jury in the impeachment, but we are the jury now, and we get the final verdict on the president and on the Senate in the election. Did you, uh, did, did you watch what Mitt Romney said on the floor of the Senate? Uh, I caught just a little bit of it, yeah. Yeah. We're, he, he seemed to be the lone voice within the Republican Party who... Um, believed that the oath required him to remove Donald Trump from office or vote to do so, at least. Um, ha have you spoken privately to any Republicans about how they feel when the door is closed? Uh, GOP senators don't generally confide in me. Um, but, <laughs> but... But I know enough people who know enough people to know that, that uh, Mitt Romney is not the only person in that chamber on the Republican side who knows that what the president did was grievously wrong. And, uh, you know, I do think he deserves credit. I think he's been on the wrong side of a lot of issues. Uh, but I think he deserves credit for having followed his conscience on this and done the, uh, done the right thing in this case. And the fact that he's the only Senate Republican to do it, uh, I think more than anything, that says a lot about what's happening in the Senate GOP today. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we have to take a little bit of a break. We'll be right back with more Pete Buttigieg. Stick around. <laughs> 